Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial on computer architecture. So today we're going to be taking a deeper look at the MIPS register file and the MIPS instruction set. So let's get started. In this table, you can see that I've marked two, two places are marked with the red box and with the green box. So in the previous tutorial, which was called Introduction to MIPS Architecture, we learned that the MIPS architecture has one MIPS register file, which is 32 bits into 32 units. So there was a total of 32 registers in the file and each register had a size of 32 bits. So in the red portion, you can see that this is what that file represents. The portion below this one, you'll see that I've marked it in green. Now, this one is the floating point registers supported by MIPS. So what MIPS has is, is it has one register file for real numbers and it has a separate register file of 32 registers. This is also of 32 bits. But this one is just for floating point numbers. So there is one for real numbers and another one for floating point numbers. Okay, so today we're just going to be discussing the methods that are involved with the real number register file. The floating point one is a little bit more tricky and we're going to tackle that later on in another tutorial. So let's get started. What are the purposes what is the purpose of each register in the MIPS register file? So as you can see there are a total of zero, 32 registers from 0 to 31. Each register is represented with a dollar sign at the front. We've all seen this in the previous tutorial. So here is our first register, the zero register. The zero register is basically there to represent the number zero. In calculations, you'll see that why having a zero register is necessary. But for now, all you need to know that the zero register represents the number zero. Next, we have our temporary registers, which is here, as you can see. Um, register number 8 to register number 15, which is conventionally called T0 to T7, are our set of temporary registers. So what's the difference between the number and the name? The number is actually the number of the register file, but the name is what we are going to try to use in our MIPS code. The conventional name is the standard way of, you know, calling each register and representing them. So you can get both types of naming methods in your questions, but whenever you're writing MIPS code, always try to use the conventional name. So these are our temporary registers. Next, we have our saved registers, which is from 16 to 23. Register 16 to 23 is our collection of saved registers and these are represented by S0 to S7. The difference between the saved and the temporary registers is that a value in the temporary register will be forgotten after a while but the one in the saved register it will be saved it won't be temporary next we have okay so these are the basic registers that we're going to need the ones i'm going to describe now deal mainly with procedures procedures and functions whatever you like to call it If you take a look at register 2 and register 3, it's written here that they store return values from functions. So whenever you, whenever a class calls another function and in the function you want to return something back to the caller, say you want to return the result of an operation back to the caller, 
you have to store the result in either a register V0 or a register V1 for it to be returned properly in MIPS code. So now register 2 and 3, conventionally called V0 and V1, is used to store results from procedures. We also have argument registers, which store the arguments of a function. These are register 4 to 7. These are represented by A0 to A3. Okay, now aside from these, you see that there are a lot of other registers in the MIPS register file. There is the SP, which is 29, register 29, and it's the stack pointer. We also have the frame pointer, the global area pointer, and a lot of others besides. So I'm not going to go into detail about what each and every register does. All you're going to need to know for today's tutorial is the first three uh, zero temporary register and save register but I will mention the function of the return address register which is RA uh, later on in the tutorial when we're discussing one of the MIPS instructions so that's it for the MIPS register file let's move on to the instruction set <laughs>